I think that the 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 hot topics uh, will be metrology, the development of the technique of frequency optical frequency combs, uh, where you can you can uh, measure the 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 the, the optical. 50 years ago, no one dreamed about measuring the, the frequency light with an accuracy of one hertz, for instance. And now with the invention of frequency combs, uh, these are just, uh, you know, multiple spikes of, of, of frequencies uh, which can be traced uh, down to, to zero frequencies. So you, you can measure the, precisely the frequency of light. Uh, with such an accuracy, and that, that's the basis of uh, modern time standard, time and length standard, and GPS, and all relies on this. In addition, the frequency combs allow you to, to do very precise spectroscopic measurements and uh, to do sensing. Uh, that, that's, that's, uh, this topic, personally for me, sounds very exciting. Uh, also, biophotonics is, is a very hot topic, and there is a big rise in, in the submissions th this year. Uh, one example is using laser for the, for the microscopy, uh, which uh, surpasses dramatically the diffraction limits. So now, you know, with the, with the nonlinear laser microscopy techniques, one, one, one can observe uh, neurons and one can observe human cells uh, with an amazing resolution of better than 100 nanometers, which is much smaller than the wavelength of light. This is the first year that optofluidics and biophotonics have been put together into one single uh, uh, subcommittee. And uh, so things are roughly f split between both of those, approximately 50% on both sides. Uh, biophotonics is a bit more broad than optofluidics. Optofluidics, most of the papers were based on uh, new technology uh, for mainly sensing and so forth for optofluidics. And it's a very, definitely a very hot area for biosensing. Uh, people are trying to do very small microliter type uh, uh, sensing and, and for body fluids and so forth. It used to be spread out across many subcommittees. And so this is the first year they kind of trying to put them all towards uh, the biophotonics part because there's a strong bend towards, towards applying it to, to biological uh, applications, mostly biomedical sciences. There's certainly uh, things where they're basically trying to do uh, detection of uh, pathogens and that sorts of things in microfluidic channels, uh, developing new ways to, to enhance resolution, uh, uh, special resolution and so forth inside uh, optical resonators for detecting uh, pathogens and, and different chemical uh, uh, biological agents. And there's, uh, there's also this whole push for, uh, it's been around for quite some time, doing, trying to do uh, uh, like lab on a chip type type technologies where you have sort of uh, some micro injection of some some bodily fluid which they do all kinds of analysis on all in one little spot both for applications and for third world so there's a, there's a nice it would be nice to push these things towards third world applications because they're very inexpensive and so and they don't have access to big laboratories like we do here in the, in the states and so that would let them have sorts of technology, sorts of testing that we can do here on a regular basis in a really small package that they could use uh, locally. Uh, so that's one of the uh, one of the applications. So the other area which we have we have a tutorial on uh, single molecule uh, imaging, which is, is actually it's really cool. And so I actually I'd like to say some words about our our invited speakers because I think we have a great slate. We have Sunny G from Harvard University, which is one of the original pioneers of cars microscopy, which I just talked about, which is basically uh, getting molecular information out of high resolution uh, nonlinear microscopy, which doesn't need tags, so no fluorescence. Uh, he's also working towards different uh, uh, mechanisms or physical phenomena used for uh, 3D imaging or in high resolution. Uh, we also have uh, W. Morner, who's definitely a pioneer of single molecule imaging. He's going to give a tutorial on, on, on that subject. Uh, it's a very interesting area, so they're trying to, they basically look at, uh, well, we can get really technical because they're, they're looking at single molecules so you don't get the ensemble average you get in, in the bulk. Like if you look at a single molecule, it looks like different properties than if you just look at a group of molecules. And so that's very interesting, especially when you start applying it to biological environment, which is much more complicated than where this originally, originally started out, you know, basically as a chemistry and physical chemistry, but now it's kind of evolved and it's becoming part of uh, 
and finding biomedical applications and, and biological sciences. So that's very interesting. Um, the third one is Dimitri Saltis. Uh, he was one of the, the pioneers of optofluidics. So he's coming uh, to give a, a talk on the new developments in his lab. Um, and so as it was, optofluidics is, is, is really, really growing. So it started out last year as a symposium here, as its own symposium. As you know, there's several symposiums per every year. And so now here's, it's, it, the, they folded into, into the biophotonics because of the large number of biophotonic applications. And so it's really growing. So it took up over half of the, I think it was slightly more than half the papers were optofluidics based.